what qualifies what qualifies the man as head of household in this segment of two divorced guys What's up, everyone? This is Sean Heineman here with another segment of Two Divorced Guys Who Remarried. And I'm in the house with Vince. What's going on, man? How you doing? <clears throat> Bless. I'm wonderful. How you doing, Doc? Man, I'm good. Ready to tackle this topic that I found very interesting once I talked about it on Facebook and people went in on it. So I said, let's discuss this, man, because if I'm getting that much emotion from especially even with men it's worth talking about whoa so, so what was the man saying man you know what i'm not going to give too much into that right now i just i just want to tackle this topic just know right. that it, it was worth addressing considering what the brothers <laughs> what brothers was saying okay. um man, and even the sisters they had some some kind of issue with it too but you know that's that's neither here nor there. Okay, so what qualifies a man as head of household? And as I was doing some research on this, I was thinking about, we discussed about the first Timothy 3 chapter, right? Yeah. And when I read it, I was like, man, and of course, they're talking about you know, as a deacon or, or you know, the, the head of a church or whatever. But as men, I mean, we, we're, we're the heads of the houses, right? So these are some things that we should have in place for our own personal life and our home. So from 1 Timothy 3, from what I, I compiled was, must not be a new believer. People outside the church must speak well of him. Well-respected, have integrity, not heavy drinkers, not dishonest with money, clear conscience, Closely examined, faithful to his wife, manage his children and household well. Now, Vince, tell me what do you, first of all, what do you think about this topic? I'm kind of getting ahead of myself, but what do you think of this man and household? Do you think this is something that's that's outdated or do you think it's something that's still that's still worth uh, discussing in 20 and 20, 2021? Yeah. Uh... It's, it's always going to be worth discussing because it, it's never outdated because, you know, people since the beginning of, of Adam and Eve and just the beginning of relationships in general, everything's a power struggle. Um, I think a lot of it has to do with, uh, one, your selection of a mate. Like, you got to, to be head of household, you got to, be with somebody that believes in that whole setup you know like because what if the person you with don't even believe that there's a head and stuff like that so y'all gonna be you know what i'm saying like you gotta have that it's like trying to establish like we're in a democratic you know society and you know not to be political or too political but you know when when, when trump wasn't leaving out of office right away they say he's kind of doing it like a like a tyrant almost. It was like, it's different. They're like, we're a democracy. You kind of running it like an empire, right? Mm -hmm. So he was running it, or he, he was reacting as if like a, like empirical in a way. And people was like, well, this is a democracy. So I think that a lot of mix up comes with people where you with somebody and you pick somebody that don't really believe in that. You're going to have some conflict. Like, like, you know, even when, when, if you believe in Christ's return, when he come back, he, you ain't, he ain't getting voted in. Like he coming back as a kind of a monarch, conquering king type of, you know, so we, we you just really got to understand where you at and how you feel about it, how they feel to even make that work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think because I was reading and uh, doing some research, I was listening to or reading a blog from and we'll talk about the qualities as well, because like you say, as far as being a believer, um, I think this is where we can at least have a little more structure. Now, whatever you believe in is what you believe in. That's no knock to whoever listening to this podcast or video, you know, do what you do. But coming from a Christian perspective, I think a lot of women, especially come to um, when it's in, when you're in therapy, because I was listening, reading this blog from Dave Willis, and he was talking about as when he's counseling people, he says, most women says, I just want my husband to step up 
and be the leader of the home. He said that's one of the biggest complaints he hear from Christian women, Christian wives. So that right there tells you that if you have some kind of idea of biblical structure and the way things are, are women really looking for their husbands to lead by default? Or is that, is that just a good church girl thing? Do you think women are looking for for for? Yeah, I was gonna ask. Go ahead. No, I was gonna ask. Do you think that's a complaint? Like, you know, like are they? Is that? Because a lot of us ask for what we don't want, and like, just not not women, not just women. A lot of us say we want something, but we really don't. We don't know all that comes with that, you know. Because if you read like chapter, if you pull from Timothy. That if you read over that all together, he he says some things that are kind of like, I remember I was in a Methodist church and we had a, a woman pastor, right? And she was going over the book of Timothy. And one of the main things it, it talked about was where it said, it, it really was saying it was, we was the argument, not argument, because it was woman pastor, but I guess there was other people in there. They were saying, they were talking about electing a new one because in, in that sect of Methodist church I was going to, it was like every four years they switch them out like a like a president almost and somebody mm-hmm. new with the congregation. And um so it was kind of like can't it says that must be a husband of one wife, right? Mm-hmm. Like it, it didn't say she must be the wife of one husband. So mm-hmm. it was kind of like given that it was this is a uh it was meant it was talking to a man being an overseer of a of a church. So they was like, how can you be an overseer of a church and be a woman as well? You know, because technically when she was the church, then she, he, her husband was like the first husband, mm-hmm. right? You know how like usually the, 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 the pastor, the first lady, he was the first husband. But, you know, he did a lot of stuff outside of it. So, and he was a really knowledgeable guy too. Like, and he, was, he probably didn't care, but it's still that if you read through Timothy, it says, you know, they got to learn in submission, like learn to be quiet. <laughs> you said that they gotta be, you know, quiet, a little more submissive, dress modestly. He named a bunch of stuff that I feel would preach, as far as what he was saying, and then he put the men on a high status too, or gave them a lot of responsibilities. Like what we just read in Timothy was like, hey, you gotta be, you know, you can't be given the wine. You gotta be good with money. You gotta have a good reputation. All this. So I think they, with at least the conversations that I have that I hear women christian women saying and stuff like that they want a lot of the uh they want the guy to step it up but they don't want to read the rest of the book of timothy and do they they part as well as far as the submissive part the how they carry themselves and stuff like that mm-hmm. so i don't know yeah I, yeah one of those the because the trait of of the man being the, the head is if you think about it, it is really hefty, right? Like there's a lot of responsibility. Heavy and, is the, is the crown. <laughs> it, it, yeah, right. It's it's a lot of responsibility. And I, I like this because it gives you this set instruction because I think a lot of times we live in a culture where everybody just do what they want to do, yeah. say what they want to say. There's no structure. And yeah. I think that's maybe why a lot of marriages may end. I may be wrong, but when you don't have any structure, you're kind of more likely to to crash and burn when you don't know your your roles and the way you should operate. And I think too, times have changed so much to where I believe men are almost in a in a dilemma. Like, am I to be old school in my ways or should I be new school? There's a lot of men are maybe caught up in which way should I go? In, in today's culture, because of course, you know, you have women who make more money than their their husbands, right? You have there's so many different dynamics, uh, and then they talk about uh, not being dishonest with money, you know. So there's so many dynamics that come into play when we enter into a marriage that sometimes I think we don't know our roles. Uh, it's those unset expectations that can really damage a marriage, I believe. Yeah, and let's 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 pop. You know, when you said like the woman making more money and vice versa, if we was and you don't have to, everybody could use their own 
requirements and stuff what they deem as for him and that's something to, to be aware of too but if we take in timothy because we did we talked about it because we was talking about well what really qualifies a man to be a head of household he was like well shoot that's like descriptions in the book of timothy and in titus where they talk about a pastor because being a head of a church is it even says it in timothy like man he got to manage his own house because how can he manage the church if he can't if his own family ain't straight but like money it never said he had to be a rich guy you know, your past, as a matter of fact, they probably shunned against it. And it was probably like, and he probably he didn't like pastors that like was like just in it for the money and stuff like that. You know, it, it never said you had to make a lot of money. He said you had to manage it well. You know, so difference. imagine doing that in the church. Like, like your, you make more money than your pastor. So are you now not going to like submit to him? You know, like you wouldn't do that in church. Like, you know, because he's a spiritual leader, right? You'll be like, well, I make more money than you. Okay, you still going to pay your tithes? Are you still going to do what you're supposed to do? Like, so I think we, we just act funny with that. You know, like, you know, like you said, everything has to have structure. It will fall apart. Even like organized crime. It's organized crime. Even they organized. So like, you know, it, it's crime. So, you know, you just got to, no matter good or bad, you know, and they say anything with more than one head is a monster, right? So it's like, you know, like you got to, uh, the head, not to skip around, but even in, in Corinthians, Paul kind of addressed that like as well. He's the, the head is an important part of the body it is the, the head of the body, but it, it ain't, he still said that ain't nothing without the, he didn't make the head better than any part of the body. Remember in Corinthians, we was like, can a hand say, I don't need the foot and vice and versa. I need to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, hey man, we all, we all in this body together. So I think that attitude of that, the head that we have is misinterpreted you know, and it causes a lot of conflict. I like that. That is good. I like that. Uh, I was looking at uh, blackandmarriedwithkids.com and they had these questions about head of household. And they're saying that it's always synonymous with provider, priest, protector. I think maybe that's default settings for most of us when we think of a man and being the head of household kind of thing. I think that's kind of like most people default settings. You know, you need to be the, the priest, provider, and protector. Yeah. And he and they asked the question, what does provider mean to you? And we kind of, uh, uh, I guess we can maybe go on a little in depth about that because I think it's something that a lot of couples struggle with. And then do you think that there's an unfair amount of pressure on men to be the main providers? Mm, okay. Because... Okay. Because from what I see in, in a lot of marriages, I see that struggle as well. Um, and, and my wife and I was talking about this the other day, how when you have a certain amount of power, when you bring a certain amount of power into the marriage, that if it's not, and, and again, if it's not under control, that's when the marriage goes south. You guys really have to work together and making a, a healthy marriage work. Um, but I think sometimes this head of household thing, I think it can uh, get out of control sometimes because if, if you do have a man that make more money or I, I will say alpha male, I guess that'd be another segment. I guess we, can talk uh, about. we got it. We can't avoid it. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we could talk about that. Um, but some, some guys, that they they might not know how to control that kind of power man but there's so much more that comes into the marriage opposed to finances uh there's time you know there's uh um because i was looking at this quote and the guy was saying about a man should be pro like he should be a pro at being a husband and he's saying you should be proactive a provider and a protector he says, as proactive, it's the opposite of passivity, being involved in every aspect of family. I thought that was good. Now, he gave a different spin on provider because men only look at this financially. He says, <laughs> provider, provide ourselves, our time, and provide a godly example. And then he says, as protector, not just physically, because when we think of protector, we always think of knocking somebody out because they looked at our wife, right? <laughs> he, he says, protect spiritually, mentally, and emotionally for your family. So 
I thought those were pretty I good. I like that's, 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 that's clever. Yeah, right? So there's other ways that men can provide. I think financially you can, but there's other ways. And, and sometimes I believe we can be um, bankrupt in some other areas outside of finances. If, if you know what I'm saying, like bankrupt mentally or emotionally. Yeah, like emotionally. And... But at the end of the day, uh, for a lot of uh, the understanding is that the other things are good, but financial support supersedes most of those other qualities, you know, a lot of time. Like, even if you could, you know, you probably, you might, Anything you just really man, it all comes down to a lot, a lot of mate, mate selection. And honestly, when I was thinking about this before we jumped on to talk about this, it was like, man, you just gotta pick somebody that really understands. Like y'all gotta have the same understanding of that, because if not, it's always gonna be some type of you mean, you know, because uh, whatever you lead with is what. It was like, cause if you're talking just money wise, there's an old saying, he who has the gold makes the rules, you know? So if that's the case, then it's like, shut up. Like, you know, like I got the more money than you, either way it goes. And when I lose money, then I lose position kind of. It's like a contingency almost. Like you, you don't even feel that way unless it's a job. Only jobs I know that are performance based like that to where you got to meet a certain number to qualify at this level. If not, you, you lose that ranking or title. And hey, if you operate like that, that's how you is. But like, if, if not, that's kind of that's a stressful relationship. I think, you know, you gotta not if you leading with your wallet, then you know that that that's uh, to me that I don't agree with that philosophy. You know, I think I just stressful. I think um, you, with the head of household thing, you 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 mentioned it, so I'm gonna kind of chime in on it because you kind of said it. But with the alpha male, right? Like mm -hmm. uh, alpha male, and like people, they say they want an alpha male, and they they say they're alpha woman. But even when you look at an alpha woman, alpha male, they don't compete with each other. They compete within they within they species in the sense of and not species they gender. Like if you got an alpha woman, she's not trying to fight the husband for alpha male position. She fighting off the other women to be the alpha male. She ain't fighting her own alpha dude. So I think there's this, this weird way of thinking. Like, if you are, well, you ain't you you ain't bickering with the alpha male. They cool. They they don't want to court like the alpha male. They fighting other contenders. They ain't fighting for that. They, they, there's two positions there. It's alpha woman, alpha male. Like the, uh, that. That's the confusion. So that would kind of bleed into it. So I apologize, but they they do that. That's when you you, you they're not fighting the, al the the alpha female. Ain't fighting the alpha rule. She's fighting the other women to be the alpha woman, not the guy. So they both, they're the head of their both, they're both heads of their field. Like, so if we struggling for power, who's, who's the enemy? Like, you know, we fighting each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of that comes from, that's good. I think a lot of that comes from faulty mindsets, culture, society. And once we get married, we have to, because I did a video not too long ago about unsaid expectations. And we get into these relationships and we get married just assuming that our spouse is supposed to know what's supposed to happen. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So we spend a lot of years trying to um, unearth faulty mindsets. And a lot of things that we're fighting when we're fighting against each other, we should be fighting against those things that's trying to destroy us. But yeah. we spend so much internal internal fighting because of the way we were raised. Uh, and then what does that look like in your home opposed to everybody else's home? Because we have the comparison thing. We talked about that before, too. So it's one of those things where um, being head of household and like you said, it depends on who you're with. That's huge. Because if you have that mindset of we gonna make we gonna make this work then i mean it might have to be some uneasy conversations and stuff like that but at the end of the day we have a common goal yeah yeah like it's it's the we part is it, and as a leader it's like do you want to 
do you want to do your way just for the sake of doing your way or do you want to do it because it's beneficial you know like to everybody like if like if you're the head of any group like you know your wife your family your, and y'all got a conflict or there's different paths y'all could take are you are you open to outside suggestions and then if that idea didn't come from you but it's a better idea are you willing to, to keep it pushing for it or you were like, well, we gonna do my idea because I came up with the idea. You know, it's like, man, like, cause you can have a, it's not biology, it's psychology at the end of the day, right? If you believe it's like a, a head of household, cause you a man, you automatically the head. And if you're the woman, you're secondary or however you treat it. But if you ain't a leader in general, like, you know, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna be able to lead your house. You know, like John Maxwell said, leadership's influence, right? So you shouldn't even be tripping on, Man, I think the coolest heads of the households ain't got to flex it. You know, they just are. You know, you just the head. Like, you know you are. If, you, if my head know it's a head. You know, my head ain't confused. My head on my body right now know it's a head. Like, it ain't no argument. So I think if you the head, like, you cool. Like, you know, you understand that. Yeah, if you yeah. yeah, and and I was once told that if you have to stand on the on your kitchen table and tell everybody that you're the head, you're probably not. Hey man, for sure. <laughs> the same with a woman. Like I, I don't know, I don't know what the I forgot what lady said the quote, but she said it's a woman that said it. I think she was the wife of a president or something. But she said power is like being a lady or something. She's like if you have to convince people you are, you probably not like. It, it, and I, I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna find it. Like, but she said it, it was a woman that said it too. And I'm like, damn, she, she that's right. Cause we 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 battling over these semantics and words and positions where we just need to be coming together trying to make this thing work. Like, what what are we trying to do here? What's our mm -hmm. and you know, like having a mission statement? Like you said in previous videos, right? Like, if you have a mission statement, man, it's just about trying to get the mission complete. Yeah, but, but I think that's a lot of issues with with a lot of marriages today because there's there isn't a mission statement i caught a lot of heat on social media about having a mission statement which no, I'm, <laughs> well I, I i realize that that's what happens yeah i realize that i'm 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 part of a dying breed and and, and things are shifting i i get that but i still believe in life regardless of how much things change, we should always have somebody that we're kind of uh, following uh, or, or submitted to, but then there's somebody that we should be bringing along to. That keeps the legacy going. Yeah. Uh, I, I have three boys and I'm, I'm teaching them something totally different opposed to what culture teaches them. That doesn't mean that they're, because in this day and age, we have to, and I'm thinking of Cicely Tyson where her passing, and I'm thinking, man, all the greats are passing away. It's, it's a new new wave of people, you know? And I was just thinking that as when I'm raising my boys, they're going to be so countercultural. It's, it's, it's going to be different. It might be a lonely road for them, but I know eventually um, I want them to be good, productive human beings at the end of the day. Men, men of integrity, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's, uh, that's, 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 that's my, that's my end goal with my boys. Eventually they're going to live their own lives, but if I'm giving them those good morals and values, good work ethic, uh, healthy fear of God, you know, those kind of things, they, they'll be okay. You was about to say something? No, I was just going to say, and you don't have to dig deep into it, but I was going to say, what, it, what, are, what are some of the things that you, you're teaching them? Well, with them being little right now, I'm just trying to teach. Cause they, you plan on teaching them? Like, how do you want them to, be, you know what I mean? Oh, well, at its, at its base core, um, and, and I, I don't want to get in too much detail about this. I kind of got a revelation the other day about some things, but I want them to, I want them to have integrity. I want them to have that word that if they say they're going to do something, do it. Because at the end of the day, that's all you're going to have. Uh, I, I want them to to respect people. I want them to respect women. Um, I, I want them to chase what God put in them. So my wife and I are always assessing what kind of gifts do these boys have? 
even even if it's not what I think they should be. Because we kind of just give them just two options. You're like, you, you're going to be a chemical engineer, a doctor, or a lawyer. Or, you know, you, you know, we just kind of mess with them. And, you know. Um, and yeah, we, 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 we like to make them think that they have options, but they really don't. But, but they end up doing, you know, whatever. Um, but I think it's important because I think it's a book I was reading called Raising Good Boys by James Dobson, I believe. And he was talking about um, praying to God to show you the gifts that you put in, that God has put into your children. Hey Amen. So you can cultivate uh, them. Yeah. yeah, so you can cultivate them while they're kids. And so, you know, by the time they're 16, 17, they're like, I've been doing this for 10 years already. Um, but I just want them to, their word, I want them to have their word to mean everything. I want them to walk in, in integrity. I want them to have a good name. I want them to respect women, man, chase purpose. I want them to to chase purpose and, and not women because too many of us uh, has been, we grew up just thinking that the mark of a man is based on how many women we can sleep with. Uh, and, and if, if you operating in your purpose, th- the woman is going to be there. You just need to focus on what you need to focus on. So those are the little things that I'm teaching them right now because they little, little. So That's good, though. That's yeah. really good. You know, I like that, man. Yeah, most of us, man, we just we just kind of wander into manhood, you know what I'm saying? And, and I read something that, that, that said, like, we don't have a – there's no rite of passage no more for, for – you know, when you, you're in that movie 300 – of uh, that's like every a lot of not even not say every man, but like a lot of men like that movie. Right? It's like a very manly movie. But you know the part where uh, I mean, it's not just his son that had to go through it. Looked like all the boys went through it, and it, some of it's fictional, some of it's real. But for the sake of keeping with things, like Leonidas, right? When he was a little boy, he had he sent him out into the wilderness, right? You know, he he had to fight other little boys his age, then he had to go out into the wilderness, he had to survive, he ended up killing that wolf, right? Mm-hmm. And he came back, everybody bowed to him, he, he basically, he passed the test, right? So, and then, if he, and if he did pass the test, he would've just got, like, either died out there, and he would've had, to, the king would've had to have more sons and raise another heir, it was just a test, man, you had to go through it. But there ain't no, like, no more standards or rites of passage for no no hey this is your now you this and not saying once you pass that you just a man and you ain't got nothing else to learn but there was a marking and something they had to go through that other men went through that they said this is what moves you now now it's just kind of like you know maybe there's like little things like getting a car probably your first summer job there's probably little stuff that subconsciously marks growing up but there ain't no real, and you got to set that for yourself, like along with a mission statement or anything. If it ain't already passed down to you, you got to give them some type of something. And even with being head of household, like what we saying, right? Like at the end of the day, man, like it's something you have to qualify for, even if you are married. Like it just comes down to trust and influence and stuff like that. Like if, if your woman, like trust you, got her best interest at heart and she's going to come to you with stuff. And she could probably make the decision on her own, honestly, but she's still going to come to you. She's going to want some affirmation or validation or maybe some direction. But you have to do that. You have to prove your character in that sense. Like, you know, you, it, she will naturally do that if, if, you are the, if you have a track record of, you know, making good decisions and communicating and doing those things worthy of people coming to you for advice and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. So, Hmm. Yeah, yeah, man. Because um, I was about to say, I was about to say something about that, about the whole rights of pastors thing. Oh, because I asked a question on Facebook not too long ago about I asked I asked towards the women. I said, "What if this man had every everything that you wanted physically, but his only issue was he was bad at decision making?" When was like? I can't do it, you know, because a lot of times we're fooled by the physical. Yeah. Um, and then so and I just asked the question, but a lot of women was like, I cannot marry somebody who makes bad decisions. And I was like, that's even a good question to ask on a date. You know, like, can you tell me some things that you've completed? 
what were you successful at? What did you fail at? What did you learn from it? Did you learn from it? Like these little things, man, to kind of help people understand uh uh, each other because even even as even as with women right you marry a woman you got to make sure that she got her head on straight because i don't care how much she can kill it on the bus it challenge if if her mind not right yeah that's know. all that's all it is is a is a, is a bus it challenge <laughs> no yeah no you're right you're right man like uh shoot man proverbs 31 uh is an overlooked verse but like Proverbs 31 is like a, a depict, well, the, once you get to like verse 8, it's like, it starts talking about uh, the virtuous woman, right? Proverbs 31 woman. And um, it says a lot of great stuff about her. You know, like, she's industrious, she wakes up early, you know, she 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 considers her field and buys it. You know, she she's on she's on it, right? And hope, you know, she probably looked good too, who knows? But it wasn't really talking about her physical. It, and matter of fact, even at the end, it, it was like, you know, beauty's fading and stuff like yeah. that. You know? Um, but she probably looked good too. Who knows? But anyway, there's a verse, there's a small part in there where he said, like her family praises her. It says all these good things about her. And then it is it, a tiny little part. It says her husband is known within the gates. Yep. Then it just keeps going. And the other, but that's a part, that's an important part. It was basically saying her husband ain't no chump. I mean, he was like, Hey, this, this whole chapter right here is about her, but just to let you know, her husband's respected in the gates. Meaning. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, like she she's all that but he's all that too like we ain't gonna go into him because you know the proverbs is full of talking to boys and men but just let you know like he's respected in the gates I mean he, he probably got he's he has he holds a position of power of influence like he's on it she ain't just this great woman and, and she got a chump for a guy and you know what you you would imagine that she would have to have like a pretty solid dude if she's doing all this stuff like she ain't gonna be with no lame guy, you know. He has to have hold his own in order to be. Now that's like an alpha female male thing right there. Like she's obviously alpha in her respect, but she has a dude that's respected as well, and they and, and they good together. You you will assume, you know. Man, yeah, that's that's so good. Yeah, because as a man, uh, especially if you got stuff going on in your own personal life where you're being successful and, you know, you make good decisions and you're looking for somebody to marry, you realize it is deeper than physical. And, and he realized that this woman going to have access to everything that he has. So she can't just be, she just can't be fine. And that's it. You know, yes. most men of substance, they realize that I got a lot at stake that whoever you marry. I was once told the second biggest decision you will ever make is the person you marry, because this person can make or break you, man. People don't think about how deep marriage is like th there's no level playing field with marriage. Like either you're going to be shot off into the stratosphere or either you're going to be into the depths of hell. Right. <laughs> so whoever you. <laughs> yeah. Whoever right. you decide, you know what I'm saying? Whoever you decide to marry, that that plays everything and how, how much they affect your life, man. Um, and even even in the Bible, like in I won't say like even in the Bible, but in Proverbs, there um they talk us about how wisdom is described in the feminine. Mm -hmm. It's like yes, it she, you know, she yells out in the streets, you know, that kind of thing. So whoever you decide to marry, she she got to have some wisdom because if not, um, it can be a lot of uh, bad, uh, you know, you talk about generations. If you have kids together and stuff like that, like you can really do damage for generations if, if you are not on the same page or not working together. Yeah. So any any closing comments, man, I'm, you know, we got all over the place today. We could have talked about a, a couple of different things, but. Uh, is there anything else that you want to talk about as far as the qualities of, of the head of a household? Man, man, like, man, no, I think we hammered it, man. Like, like, I think, like, uh, it's, uh, mate selection is a big thing. Like I keep saying, uh, you got to choose the right one. Both, both, both parties do. <laughs> and then you got to just don't focus so much on that title, man. Just do the, do the stuff, do the stuff. Um, <laughs> Do the work, you know, and then it will come. Like, cause some people have influence over people with titles because they got, they just got that juice. Mm -hmm. You know, like you can have the, the person that's really, that's titled in charge, but the real person in charge is the person that people look to when, when stuff hits the fan. 
So, you know, don't worry and don't trip over that. Like that whole head, what qualifies you as head of household, man, is having a vision for yourself, for your family and, and, and moving with that. Mm, man, that's <laughs> what better way to sum it up than, than that statement. Wow. Well, this has been another amazing episode of Two Divorce Guys. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and also you can find this podcast available on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Anywhere you listen to uh, streaming podcasts, make sure you leave a review and rating on iTunes, especially to my iTunes uh, users, especially if you're on Clubhouse and we're connected, make sure you leave a rating and review. We would greatly appreciate that. Give us an honest review. If it's two stars, if it's five stars, I just want to hear your feedback and how we're doing overall. This is Sean Heineman with Vincent Fuqua. Yes, sir. Y'all take care, people. Thanks again. All right, Doc.